This week's episode of What's in the Box, we're going to take a look at the Nintendo Virtual Boy. So welcome back to the channel guys, thank you so much again for clicking on this video, I really appreciate it, I hope I entertain you or at least educate you a little bit. So as you can tell from the video that's happening right now, the Virtual Boy was our winner of the poll last week, what you wanted to see, what's in the box, and this is the Nintendo Virtual Boy from the mid 90s. My box is uh, second hand, I didn't buy this retail. This is from a yard sale a few years ago and I'm quite happy with my purchase. We'll open her up and we'll see everything that's inside. Anything that I'm missing, I will show pictures of. But uh, just going around the box, I really love the colors. Red and blue to me doesn't seem like it should work, but for the Virtual Boy it does. This splash panel that they have with all the games that are available. I think there was 14 or 15 uh, in North America available and it just gives you a quick little write-up of what they are. It shows you what's included inside everything that comes with it and then it shows you accessories that you could buy. I think at the time you could buy the AC adapter and there was plans for there to be a tether so that you could uh, plug two uh, virtual boys together like daisy chain style so that you could play against each other. I'm not sure if that actually came out. And we'll just go around the box again and look at all of the named games at the time. So we have Galactic Pinball, Tellero Boxer, Red Alarm, Mario Tennis, Wario Cruise, coming soon, Mario Clash, coming soon, and again, just a little write-up of each. Just before we get into the inside of the box, I wanted to show you guys a advertisement from 1995 for the Virtual Boy. So this was really cool, especially when it came out. I do vaguely remember these commercials. I remember seeing the Mario Tennis one a bit too, but this is kind of like uh, War of the World style, kind of like Planet of the Apes with like the caveman being captured and hunted down by the Virtual Boy and he's being forced to play it. So while I'm doing the unboxing, I'm not going to narrate everything that I'm doing because it's going to kind of be redundant. So I wanted to tell you a little bit more about the Virtual Boy. The Virtual Boy was introduced in the summer of 1995. This was to keep fans entertained while they were waiting for the Nintendo 64. It's priced at $179.95, so that's about $360 in today's market. Unfortunately, this system did not perform well in Japan and the United States when it was released, and this led to the absence of a European and Australian launch. The Virtual Boy was discontinued less than one year after its launch, with no third-party games ever being made for it officially. Only 800,000 units were shipped, and in that, only 770,000 units were sold. Blockbuster offered a rental of the system in a sturdy case for $9.99, and it came with some games. Now, these marked rental units are sought-after collectibles now. Additionally, there was a promotion between Blockbuster and NBC and Nintendo Power to give away free Virtual Boy systems, games, and even trips to visit NBC TV sets. Now, the inside of the Virtual Boy is the interesting and infamous part. The hardware of the Virtual Boy is really the heart of the platform, since only 14 games were officially released in North America. The hardware is based on high-resolution LED display technology, which was developed by Reflecting Technology Incorporated. Each LED display had more than 200 lights that switched on and off quickly to produce the image of the game. The image is reflected off and on, oscillating mirrors and the vibration of the mirror makes the image appear thick, which in reality is just the vertical line of the LEDs. The image is focused through an adjustable lens and passes the player's eyes. The 3D effect is basically created by shifting the image for the eye using an interocular display technique. Each LED had 4 shades of red color and 32 levels of intensity. And for me, after about 20 minutes of playing, it was headache inducing. Not saying that the games weren't fun, because, you know, the few that I have displayed here are decent, but it hurts the eyes. And I mean, physically, it wasn't 
uncomfortable if you sat at the right height for uh, you know a table or an island and you had it sitting on its legs uh, it wasn't bad to play it, the focus was okay the headphone jack worked well the controller is pretty comfortable so you know just because it didn't have enough games that came out right before the N64 uh, I see how this fails, but you know, the Virtual Boy was not horrible, and it's something that I'm very glad to have in my game collection. And that's what's in the box for the Virtual Boy, guys. I hope you found this a little entertaining and uh, maybe a little educational. So in two weeks, I want to do another episode. I need you to let me know if you want to see the inside, what's in the box for an Atari 5200, the Super Famicom, maybe the PlayStation 2. I mean, like, that's already like 20 years, 20 plus years old. Maybe not everyone knows what's in a PS2. Or I just dug this out. How about the Guitar Hero Aerosmith box? Let's open one of those guys up. So... Here's the loser again, the Iron Man helmet. If there's any love for it, let me know down in the comments if you want to see what's in that box. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you with a new video in about two weeks. Take care, guys.